Hi, my name's John Downs. I'm 50 years old, and I'm the director of an organisation called the Centre for Fortean Zoology. We're the world's largest and fastest growing Mr Animal Research Group, and we've been going for 17 years. Last week, together with my wife, Karina, aged 53, and my friend and colleague, Max Blake, aged 19, I was in the west of Ireland, visiting an old friend of mine. And though it was primarily a social occasion, we did pay a visit to some lakes which were reputedly haunted by lake monsters. While we were there, we took some strange photographs and video of what do appear to be living creatures on the lake. This, I don't think, is a lake monster. I think it's a bird. Max identified it as probably being a tufted duck. But remember this little wake. It's dwarfed by what happens in a few minutes' time. We were in Ireland to visit an old friend of mine, Tony Shields, now in his early 70s. Tony is sometimes known as Doc, and until his retirement a while back, he was known as the Wizard of the Western World. He's an author, playwright, stage magician, a surrealist, painter, filmmaker, and all sorts of other things. He is the nearest thing to a father that I still have living on this planet, and I love him dearly. However, in 1977, he took a photograph of what he claims is the Loch Ness Monster. He was involved in a lot of monster-raising activities in the late 70s and early 1980s, and although he has been largely retired from the field for over two decades now, it really would be unscientific and unwise not to consider his part in what happened in the events in this video. Max was driving, and Tony spent the day being a tour guide for us. We drove around the Ring of Kerry and ended up at the Three Lakes of Killarney, the middle of which, Muckross, had been site of some monster sightings early in this present century. I never for a single moment thought that we were ever going to see anything, but Tony, in his broadest Irish accent, told us to hold our wished and watch the water and see what happened. Some of what we saw, like these ripples, were almost certainly just made by large fish, maybe salmon but others weren't. Some were far more problematical. In the top right-hand corner of this frame, you can see what appear to be white objects moving underneath the water. However, they're too vague to be certain of anything, but they are irresistibly reminiscent of photographs and film produced earlier this century on Loch Ness of what appeared to be an immense white eel. Indeed, I personally saw something about three minutes before we started to film, which looked just like that. It was to the right-hand side of the little island, and it was far more distinct than any of the objects that you can see here. But we filmed them, and whatever they were, they were moving slowly towards us. They looked animate to me, and in fact they were easier to see with the naked eye than they are on this film. But the very fact that they show up as digital images would suggest that they are three-dimensional and solid, rather than just a trick of the light. Then, near the shore in front of us, were a series of fairly large ripples, as if large fish had been jumping out of the water. This is precisely what they were, and I would suggest that they were probably salmon. The barking in the background, by the way, isn't some strange paranormal werewolf. It's my dog Biggles playing in the garden. Now this is where the first important part of the sequence begins. Just look in the water to the right-hand side of the island. This is where I'd earlier seen what seemed to be an immense white eel-like creature. And here you can see something swimming, slowly but surely, across the water. It's far too big to be a duck, and in fact, if you look closely, you'll see that there's nothing above the water. It's something just under the surface. The whole thing is very reminiscent of the pictures which made the newspapers a couple of years ago when somebody took photographs of what appears to be an immense creature swimming across Lake Windermere. We said then that we thought it was probably a giant eel, and we stand by that analysis now. Indeed, we believe that most of the monsters of monster-haunted lakes across the Northern Hemisphere, in North America, Northern Europe and Northern Asia, are just that, enormous eels, probably mutants of the known species of eel, which for some unknown reason have become immense in size. These are just more large ripples from fish jumping, 
Remember that the fish must be quite sizable because we are over a quarter of a mile above the water here. But the interesting thing, if we postulate a flesh and blood hypothesis for these creatures, is that this is the time of day when the fish are moving. It's the time of day when the smaller fish chase the insects, the larger fish chase the smaller fish, the enormous fish chase the larger fish, and if there is an uber predator in the lake, it's going to be the time when it too comes out to breed. And could this be that uber predator? Just look at the way it's moving. It's far too big to be any known species of animal that should live in that lake. As Mac zooms back, you can see quite how far away from the lake we are. But then he zooms back in again and you can see how the creature, whatever it is, has turned round and made an enormous splash. We were all massively excited by this and didn't really know what to do. That is, except for Tony, who'd seen things like this before on many occasions and remained remarkably calm. They're moving, they're moving, we shouted. Yeah, and why wouldn't they? Tony asked with a grunt, seemingly taking delight in the fact that we were getting so wildly excited about something which he just took for granted. We carried on watching the water, unsure as to whether these strange waves were caused by some huge creature underneath the water, or whether they were just the result of currents and strange swells and squalls. And then something utterly extraordinary happened. Look at this. You can see something large and dark, and very, very fast, moving like a torpedo and leaving something like a torpedo trail in its wake as it zooms right towards us and then bears to the right. I've never seen anything like this before in my life, and it's difficult to know how to explain it. I've been lucky enough to spend a lot of my adult life on the track of unknown animals. I've seen things before that I was unable to explain, but I've never encountered anything like this, and certainly never been able to film it. In my opinion, this is one of the most important pieces of film of an anomalous object on a UK or Irish lake that has ever been taken. Probably the most important one ever to be taken on a lake in Ireland. This film has been completely unedited and unmessed around with. And for the record, I used Cakewalk Guitar Tracks Pro version 2 and Magic's Movie Edit Pro version 14 to add the commentary and delete the original soundtrack. Apart from that, I have done nothing to the film. The original soundtrack was taken off purely because it shows me, Max and Tony swearing a rather amount in a way that I really don't think would be appropriate for a family audience. Max and I were swearing, particularly me, because we were so completely shocked and dumbfounded by what we'd seen. But we'd very much rather that the British press didn't show us up to be a bunch of foul-mouthed yobs. Any scientist or forensic examiner who wishes to have a look at the film can see it, warts and all, in its entirety. Thank you very much for watching. My name is John Downs, Director of the Centre for Fortean Zoology, www.cfz.org.uk, 01237 431 413, john, j-o-n, at eclipse.co.uk. Thank you for watching.